Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to be checking out the KuTech Leadbook Pro 2-in-1 laptop. So let's get started. Now, before we begin, I do want to thank KuTech for sending this over to me for review. And everything we talked about will be linked down in the description below. More recently, you guys probably noticed I've been doing more reviews on mini PCs and laptops as well because I want to install Linux onto everything. And I want to be able to check to see how compatible it is with Linux. So yeah, today we have a two-in-one laptop which is similar to what you would find on a Surface Pro. But here's the thing, instead of paying the label tax, that's what I would like to call it, you could get something similar to what a Surface Pro would be in a fraction of the price. That's how come I actually like to review most companies that are not branded to be that big, if that makes sense. Anyway, uh, to jump into this, this is a 12.6 inch laptop. And one of the things that I didn't know that I was gonna love is the aspect ratio of the screen. The screen aspect ratio is three by two compared to what you would normally see, which is 16.9, which is like a wide screen. So this is more of like a square. And especially on a screen this small, which is 12.6 inches, I'm surprised how well it works. It actually feels bigger than my 14 inch laptop, as well as the 13 inch, and this feels bigger, just because the aspect ratio is more of a square. Because of the specs on that this is more of an office laptop this is not for gaming this is more like answering emails web browsing doing office work remote desktop anything that has to be required to be like an office setting this can do as far as the outside goes you have two external ports which is USB-C both could be used to power the device it does have a 45 watt charger so it does charge the device pretty quick on top you have the power button as well as a fingerprint scanner and then on the right side you have a 3.5 millimeter jack and volume controls now on the back of this guy you have this little flap that actually allows it to stand up and it could go up to 150 degrees so you could actually lay it almost down flat if you're standing on top of a desk to look at it and then this keyboard is detachable and it converts it into a tablet mode but as far as the keyboard goes you could fold it up all the way or detach it flip it to the other side and keep the keyboard on while you still have the tablet mode on so you don't have to dump the keyboard off to the side or lose it or something like that you can still attach it while using the tablet mode now as far as the keyboard goes the keyboard types fairly well i thought it was going to be a little squishy but it's not it has a good bounce back it also is backlit now as far as the touchpad goes it's all right it's not the best it's a little bit too sensitive a lot of other laptops that i've used before has a much better touchpad but this i feel like i can't get it to work properly with my finger because i tend to sweat and anytime that your hand is a little wet or sweaty or whatever it is this doesn't pick it up that well so scrolling and moving the mouse to me is a little bit not as responsive as i want it to be because my finger is like that i would have to actually literally dry my fingers then I could use it and it'll be fine. Good thing about this is that it is a touch screen. So I've actually come to the point where I'm used to touching the screen to scroll up and down instead. So that actually saved me a lot because I now enjoy doing that. And I saw myself trying to do that on another laptop, you know, touch the screen. But either way, the touchpad could be better. Now this model does also come with a pen and it has a magnetic holder on the side. This pen itself allows you to draw, write, do whatever you want with it, but it also has a pressure sensor. So the harder you push down, the thicker the width of the line could be if you are drawing. So that's pretty cool on its own. So if you are an artist and you need a tablet, this could actually do that as well with the included pen. The only weird thing that I thought they did with this is that the pen uses a micro USB to charge while everything else is USB-C. So I wish they really would have kept the USB-C on the pen so I could just use the same charger to charge the laptop and charge the pen instead of trying to find an adapter for the micro USB. Now the included charger that they come with is a little, like I said, 45 watt charger, USB-C on both ends, and you could replace this cable if you need the cable to be a little bit longer. And yeah, I have a few of these, so I don't even really need to use this charger because I have other chargers that work. Now, as far as the operating system that it comes with, it is Windows 10. You could upgrade it to Windows 11, which I feel might be a little bit better because the tablet mode on Windows 11 does work slightly better. Now, I am planning to format this and install Linux on there. So on my next video, I'm gonna be testing Ubuntu Touch, Ubuntu uh, more of a tablet setting and turn it into a desktop. So I'm, gonna, I'm a little excited about that. Now, as far as the hardware specs go, we have an i7 Core 8550U, 16 gigs of RAM and 512 megabytes storage. Now, as far as the GPU goes, it is using the Intel UHD 620, which isn't all that great, but we're not playing games with this. This is not meant for games. You could probably 
play some older games, but yeah, the 620 is really not meant for that. It's more for office work, multimedia streaming, etc., etc. Now, you do have two speakers on this guy. They're both about one watt, and they're not too impressive. They're laptop speakers, tiny baby ones, but they do the job. It has a built-in mic and also has two webcams, one in front and one in back. And as far as the mic goes, it is a tad bit less sensitive. It could be louder, but it's not as loud as I want it to be. And if you do scream into it, you could peek it. So yeah, it's got a fine line right there with the mic. It's not the best of quality, but it is there and it works. Now, one of the things that works really great with this guy is the Wi-Fi. Every time when I do a laptop review or do a mini PC review, the first thing I do is dump the image off to my storage. So this way, if I screw up anything, I could restore the image. And I was getting anywhere between 50 to 70 megabytes on upload and download with the Wi-Fi. So the Wi-Fi 6 on this guy is very impressive. It works really well. Now, I've been using this guy for about two weeks and the battery life is ridiculously good. Uh, so far, I've been using this for the past week and I have not charged it once. And I, that's using it over the weekend, picking up the laptop, answering some emails throughout the week. And I still have like maybe a quarter left right now and I have not charged this at all. So the battery life on this guy is impressive. Right now, it is on the brightest setting and you know, it's still doing pretty good. Now, ultimately, I love these brands. I like the fact that you don't have to be, pay that big brand tax and get better, similar to or better specs than what you would find on uh, a comparable model. So for example, we have the Microsoft Surface 7 Pro Plus, which is comparable to this guy, 12.6 inches. That's got an i5, this one's got an i7, that one's got eight gigs of RAM, this one's got 16, and that one only has 128 storage, while this one has 512. But that guy is 799, while this is still 799 as well. Same price, but this is like double the specs. Now, if you want to file the specs, you would probably be getting the Pro 8 Plus uh, with similar specs to this, which is an i7 for that guy. And you have to pay close to $1,000 just to get to what you would pay for to get this one. So if you're factoring the performance into the matter, this is a much better deal than you are getting with something like a Surface Pro Plus. Now, my only gripe with this is that the keyboard loves fingerprints. Like I could touch it and just smear it and get my oils all over it. Same thing with the touchpad. I get the oil all over the touchpad. So I kind of like have to wipe it down. On that note, uh, I do really enjoy using this, including the fact that it's only about three pounds, or actually under three pounds, it's 1,200 grams. So this is a little bit lighter than any laptop that I've owned, and it's just as powerful. The CPU on this is close to the one that I've always been using, which is the Lenovo 530S, which is the laptop you guys usually see. It's still the same CPU, so I know the performance on this guy, and it can handle a lot. The only downside to this is the touchpad. I don't carry a mouse with this guy because it's meant to be extremely portable, so I don't carry a Bluetooth mouse. Anyway, that is it for me. If you guys enjoyed this review, please let me know down in the comments below or if I miss something, let me know. Uh, I will be installing Linux on this so the next video about this guy will have Linux and I'll do a full review on that as well. If you guys have any questions about this particular model, let me know down in the comments below as well. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts. <laughs>